I'm Kristen, and you're listening to Podcast and Amplify, a podcast for women entrepreneurs who want to amplify their voice and brand through podcasting and grow a wildly successful business. I'm the executive producer and host of two shows and an entrepreneur, and I love helping women grow their visibility, mindset, and business to the next level. Each week, I share tips on how to launch and leverage your podcast, and I'm bringing on the very best business leaders to give you advice on how to build your business empire. Let's amplify your voice and business. Welcome back to the podcast and Amplify podcast. Today, I'm super excited to talk to Sandra Morno. She's a master tax strategist and IRS enrolled agent, and she loves numbers and she loves to help women of color to really figure out their finances, help them show up and really take advantage of tax codes and kind of level that playing field because as we know, the playing field isn't really level. So we have to you know, have people like Sandra in there getting that knowledge and then bringing it back to us and helping us navigate this, uh, which can be a really confusing system. So thank you, Sandra, for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to have this chat with you. Is there anything else that listeners need to know about you? I am born and raised in Miami, Florida, and I've actually been doing this for like 12 years now. Every time I think about it, I'm like, whoa. (laughs) That's awesome. And so it sounds like you really just are great with numbers and probably love helping people. I I do. It's, It's a weird thing. Like, I think when I first started, I really didn't care for this um industry um and then it became like a challenge for me I was just like oh no we can we can push this we can do this and you know a lot of people are scared of the IRS but they're just people just like us seasonal workers on top of that but just following kind of a script and I understand that script and so that's how I really just try to help people that's great so when people are starting out, let's let's start there. What should they do from a financial standpoint, you know, when they're first starting their business? Where's the best place to really um, invest your time? And like, what's the smartest thing to do? Um, if you really want to lay down a, a good financial standpoint for you or starting point, it has to be getting a budget, right? I, and I know that sounds so simple, but it's so crucial to the success of your business because if you don't know um, what your cost of goods are, right, or how much you need to actually get this business going and how much you're going to spend, then you're kind of in the dark. Like, I am always looking at my budget. (laughs) But of course, I love numbers, but it's just one of those things like, am I on budget, right? Do I have enough um, allocated for business expenses? Do I have enough allocated for when I'm meeting with clients? All those things, we have to take that into consideration. And a lot of people don't. They just start a business, which is cool, but you have no idea on how much it's going to cost to run that business. Right. And then you're not keeping track of necessarily what's going out, what's coming in. And yeah, that seems like where it can get go haywire really quickly. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Start with the the budget. Um, and then I know you talk about how there are opportunities that people are missing out on in terms of like keeping their money. Mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? So that one just really kind of goes into the budget, right? So, and you, you talked about it, like, okay, you don't know what's coming out and what's coming in. So one of the first things when I'm talking to a client is I'm like, do you have a system in place where you keep your, like, where you can track everything? Like a QuickBooks, a FreshBooks, a Wave Apps. And when they tell me no, I'm, <laughs> I get a little cringy because I'm like, oh my God, so how do you know what you're spending? How do you know what's coming in? That is a huge asset right there, right? So let's say now you do have your QuickBooks in place. Now you can see, hey, I made $5,000, but I spent $7,000. So technically I didn't make any money. I'm losing money. So once you have that system in place, now you need to go in and review your expenses monthly, or you're working with a bookkeeper who's helping you look at your numbers. 
And you'd be surprised on how much money you can find. Like perfect example, when I really started getting into looking at my numbers, I noticed I had several subscriptions that I was not using <laughs> that added up to about $100 a month. And I was just like, oh, wow. So think about that. That's $1,200 that I could have saved to do something else that actually helped my business. So that's why I'm constantly telling people, review your numbers at least on a monthly basis so you can cut out the fat, you know, like you don't need this, you do need that, um, and you'll be surprised how much money you can save. Yeah, it sounds like just simply knowing, like I said, what's coming in, what's coming out, and being able to track that over time. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like using apps or spreadsheet is a good way to, probably simple way to do it. At what point do you think someone needs would need to bring in a professional? Like, when do you recommend people kind of switch over from doing it themselves in their, say, spread, homemade spreadsheet or, or in an app to? It really all depends, like, on what the business is. I usually tell people, so what I offer as a freebie is, like, there's something called Wave Apps, absolutely free. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit more high tech than a spreadsheet because a spreadsheet, that means you got to actually put those numbers in, right? And you got to make it calculate. And a lot of us don't even like to do that. So I tell people to kind of start with the wave apps and then maybe just seek out a bookkeeper who can help you just to navigate things like, hey, show me how to make this work for myself. And you'd be surprised on how little it cost. I know a lot of bookkeepers that I work with and they're just like, yeah, I just go in and I look at numbers quarterly, or I actually teach the client how to use it themselves. So I usually tell people, if you have a decent budget, go ahead and price out some bookkeepers and see if they can show you how to use the system. Um, And then you can do it yourself. Now, when it becomes overwhelming, then you're like, okay, I don't want to do this no more. Then you can can hire that bookkeeper um, on an ongoing basis. Okay, so I love that recommendation of the app because it sounds like, yes, you're right. Like entering in the numbers into a spreadsheet. Some people love it. Some people, it's not their thing and they're not going to do it. So having that something else automated, that sounds great. And then you really inspired me to do like look for a bookkeeper because I think sometimes that feels like a big next step. But the way you described it, it was like, no, it's not really that much of an investment and they can actually teach you how to do what you need to do. So that's a great, sounds like a great way to sort of baby step into then, like you said, when it becomes overwhelming, just hire the person to do the thing that (laughs) you don't have the time or energy or it's not in your zone of genius kind of thing. Yeah. So what strategies do you have for saving money rather than giving it to the IRS? I think I heard you talk about this before and I was like super excited to ask you this question. Oh my gosh, there's so many, but like one of my favorite ones is I tell people you can hire your children, right? And a lot of people are like, that's not true. And I'm like, it is. If your child is at least seven years old, you can hire them, put them on payroll um, and pay them up to $12,000 a year. Wow. Right? And and I mean like a real job, people. <laughs> Not you know, you actually have to have substantiate, have a W two. Um, think about it. We you know, you have kids, you ask them to empty out the trash or you ask them to hold that camera, take my picture. They're actually working for you, right? Shred these papers. It's just little things like that, like an assistant would do have your child do it. Um, And then on top of that, now that you are paying them, you can open up a retirement account for them and they can use that for college. So it's like you're building up a college fund and it's all the write-off under your business. So that to me, you can save about, so if you're paying your child 12 grand, you can um, put in about $5,000. That's $17,000 that your business is able to write off and you're investing in your child. So that is one of my favorite ones. (laughs) okay I never would have thought of that I don't have children I need to go get some (laughs) so they can so I can get some labor (laughs) no but I think it's like a win 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 because you're getting things done they're getting job experience and most kids do money for chores Mm -hmm. but you're actually teaching them potentially skills that will help them outside the home not that skills inside the home aren't important, but you know they're getting that type, different type of experience and you can help them learn how to invest the money that they get into their retirement at a really early age. Yeah. So there's a lot of like 
things going mm-hmm. on there that that are very beneficial. I that's a genius. <laughs> Hey, explorers, we'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I wanted to take just a few seconds to invite you to the free workshop that I created. It's called The Three Secrets to Starting Your Successful Podcast. Now, it's all about helping you to start your dream podcast so that you can share your voice and expand your business. If you want to join, just go to explorerandyou.com. It's totally free. All right, friend, back to the show. And another one is um, the mileage deduction. A lot of people are just like, let me just track my miles. Um, But there's actually two ways of doing it. You can do your actual car expenses. So think about how much you spend on your car, especially if you like have a lease, um, your oil changes, um, anything that pertains to your car, your car insurance, um, the squeegee that you bought, the gas that you put in your car, all of those things can be used actually as a write-off. And so what happens if you're working with a professional They'll take both the uh, actual and they'll take the uh, mileage, just the standard miles, and see which one gives you a higher deduction. But a lot of people only keep track of their miles. Like for my clients, I'm like, give me both. Let's see which one works out better. And a lot of the times, the actual will give you a lot higher uh, deduction than just your miles. Okay. So that is where having someone like you help. Yeah. Because I think most people probably would never even think to look at that yeah yeah so they don't talk about it like the IRS is just like hey mileage just standard miles just you know write off your miles but there's another way to do it because they don't want you to know (laughs) so do you feel like you're just like uncovering all of these things that are there but they're only there for do you feel like it's for people who really dig or just curious about well you know, a lot of these are just out there, but the thing is, because that's not your zone of genius, you're not going to even think about it, right? But for me, when I'm working with a client, I, you know, I analyze their numbers, I'll look at things like, hey, um, your auto expenses are only $750, how is that even possible? So then I dig deep, I need you to bring me this so that we can compare, so that we can actually make this work better for you. So um, a lot of the times, People just don't know what they don't know. And when they go, you know, you go get your taxes done, you give them your W-2, you give them certain expenses. um, And only certain people will actually dig in and be like, no, this don't make sense. But (laughs) I think you have more expenses in there and you ask them more questions. So, And so listeners, you want to hire someone like Sandra, who's going to do the digging and going to ask those, you know, extra questions so that you get the most that you can from, you know, from what you can. So um, I want to talk a little bit about how do we own our power when it comes to finances? I know this is really important for you, for especially for women of color. So how do we really yeah, own our financial power? Um, it's really about just having a better relationship with it and changing your mindset about it, right? Because I know when I tell people, hey, I do taxes and tax planning, like, I feel like people just, <laughs> they, they want to walk they away. Just, they just, yeah, talk, right? turn off. Um, <laughs> like, I think oh, I'm God, busy. No. I have some something to right. do. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's one of the first things that we need to change. It's it's not your enemy, right? But this is your money. You own it. You rule it. So it's about taking control, having that budget, reviewing your expenses, and changing that mindset. Don't be afraid of it. You can tackle this. And even if you can't, find someone who can help you all year long that'll help you edu- that'll help educate you and just you know, kind of ease your mind about your taxes and your money so that you're not you know, anxious or scared or worried. You know, um, So I think that's what it is, just changing that mindset and finding someone who can really help you. I think all those words you mentioned, anxious, worried, (laughs) are definitely things that I do currently feel around money. And, you know, I'm working on my money mindset, but I think it is important to, like you're saying, have a, have someone to guide you. I think if anything, it will just make you go further along on your journey that much faster. Yeah. You know, you can kind of struggle with it yourself, but I think if you have someone you trust and can guide you and kind of help you feel like it's all okay and it's 
yeah. Yeah, and you're right. It's really empowering to just be able to have conversations around your finances and I think to know the language because it's it seems like it's a it's is kind of a foreign idea to most of us because it's not something that we really like learn growing up necessarily. And there is a certain, like, there's a language to it that a lot of us just don't know and don't feel comfortable talking about. Yeah, but you, and and that's a good point. And a lot, there are actually quite a few people in my industry who break it down. Like we, I, I don't want to say, well, we dumb it down so that you can understand, right? What this number means and how it's applied to your taxes, what every line means, what your gross income means. And so once you understand that, like you have that power, you, you know what I mean? Like, okay, after all my expenses for this year, I still have $30,000 left. That's my net income. How is that going to affect my taxes? You know? And that's where people like me come in and be like, okay, well, we need to kind of maneuver some things. Let's get this number either lower or apply it to a different place. You know what I mean? So it's it's not as bad as you think. And I know that's easier said than done because I'm in it. <laughs> but um, just changing the mindset, like you said, is so important. Just the knowing more, I think, gives you that power to have that agency really over your, your money, which you should have agency over every part of your life. And so I think for you know, women and women of color, like I think it's, it can be a little intimidating, maybe something that we don't feel like we're even a part of that conversation. So it's really up to us to like assert ourselves and be part of that, that conversation. I know you talked about like having, having someone help you, you know, figure, figure out your, your taxes and teach you sort of that financial lingo. So if I were to do something tomorrow to improve my relationship with money, like one small thing, what would you suggest that be outside of, you know, working with someone? You view your numbers, like go look at how much is coming in and how much is coming out. And, you know, you'll be shocked. You'll be like, oh my God, I spent $400 on meals. I might need to slow that down. <laughs> just, just a little thing like that gives you power, right? Because then you'll be like, okay, we need to slash this budget to 200 because my whole philosophy is like, if you're spending something and there's no return on investment, then you definitely need to rethink that expense. I, and I'm sensing that a lot of people that you work with just simply don't look at their numbers. And that's the biggest thing. Like I'll have people they are like, well, I got money in the bank. I was like, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Like, did you pay your bills? Like the numbers don't lie. You made 5,000, you spent 7,000. You're negative 2,000. Yes, you may have money in the bank, but that may have been from last month. So it's just, you know, trying to understand what's really going on and being present in that moment, right? Because money in the bank don't mean nothing. No, I, I love it. And I love having um, someone, you know, just be, have that uh, sort of tough love, like, no, this is just what you need to do. It may not be easy, but it's the simplest way to, you know, get to where you need to go financially. Uh, but these have been so, so helpful. And I was wondering if you could let listeners know where they can find out more about you. Okay, well, the easiest way to find me is on LinkedIn. Um, and at my name, just Sandra Morno, M-O-R-N-O. I don't, I doubt there's another one out there. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's the easiest way. Connect with me, you know, send me a message and I'll be happy to chat. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, sharing all of your financial wisdom and insights with us today. Well, thank you for having me. This was a great conversation. It was just really fun. If you love today's episode, please subscribe so you don't miss a show. And rating and reviewing this podcast is the best way to help support us. Always remember your voice and what you have to offer is needed in the world. Until next week, take care.